So the, the second theme um, that we look at during this first unit is called place. And every one of these themes um, has a designated question that goes along with it. Location was, where is it at? Theme number two with place asks a more pointed question, which is, what is it like? We've all been in the situation where you hear about a, a specific area um, or, you know, maybe a region of the world or city, and you've asked the question, well, what's it like there? And as you're in that conversation, a person will start telling you, well, there's a lot of this or a lot of that. The weather's like this. The people are like that. And we go into this combination of what is known as physical and cultural characteristics. Everything that you're describing there is what is known as the cultural landscape. So when you look down here, and it says the visible features of an area of land as modified by humans, the cultural landscape is when you look at an area, what have the humans done to it, and what does it say about that group of people? So for example, if all of a sudden we just vanish from the earth and, you know, People come in later, maybe a group comes in and they're kind of researching us. What would they be able to say about the West Cobb area? It's a pretty highly developed region, lots of, of road systems, uh, seem to be pretty uh, suburban, if not urban, that Christianity is still the dominant religion in this area. When you look at the number of churches there are, that are around the region, that, you know, we can come to the high schools and you know that education was important, but also athletics were important as well from looking at the high school stadiums, but also looking at the number of recreational parks and facilities that are in the area. This is talking about the people, but any th anytime you're describing the people in an area and what's important to them, that's called a cultural characteristic. A physical characteristic is things that are naturally occurring. So before we start talking about these, I'm going to skip around here for a second. When we describe a place, you can describe it physically and culturally. Physical characteristics themselves are naturally occurring features. Landforms, uh, this could be mountains, it could be hills, it could be valleys. Um, then you have bodies of water, lakes, oceans, streams, rivers, whatever it may be. The climate, you know, what's the climate like? We don't control climate, so it's a naturally occurring feature. The vegetation, what naturally grows, what types of um, what types of food can be grown, what types of trees are there, and then the animal life. So these are physical characteristics that humans really have very little control over. And when you describe those, you're not describing the people. However, with cultural characteristics, okay, I, I made a goof here. Food that's grown would be agriculture because who grows the food? People do. The industry, what do people do for a living? What's their religion? Is it rural? Is it urban? A lot of times when we say something is rural, in other words, there's not a whole lot of people that live there, you think of that as being a physical feature, but it's not because it's describing the number of people that live in an area. And so that would be a cultural characteristic. So physical is describing naturally occurring elements. Cultural is describing the groups of people that live there. And when you combine those two, you get a sense of place and what it's like in a specific area. So let's go back now. There's three different terms and three important terms that you're responsible to know. Number one is toponym, the name given to a place on earth. Literally, Hillgrove High School is the toponym of this school. Marietta is the toponym of a city. Powder Springs is the toponym. Names can tell us a lot about an area. Hillgrove, if you know much about Hillgrove at all, that name came from Dr. Hill and his wife's maiden name, uh, I believe, which was Grove. And so you tied them together to create Hillgrove. That's where the name came from. It's got a lineage there. Uh, Powder Springs. The reason it's called Powder Springs is because I believe during the Civil War, pre-Civil War, that there was an area, there was a, a natural spring that had calcium deposits in it, so it looked like gunpowder. Powder Springs. We can learn a lot by these historical place names. Rome, Georgia. It's not Rome, Italy. Rome, Georgia. But guess what it was named after? Rome, Italy. Same thing with, hope some dog fans are out there, Athens, Georgia. Athens, Greece. That's why it's called the Classic City. Um, you, you look at a lot of Christian-based names in other areas, Bethlehem, Georgia, okay? And so we know that typically when people develop an area, the original people, it says a lot about who developed it and why they developed it. Site is what we've just been doing. When you're describing place, what is it like, those physical and cultural characteristics, you're describing its site. And situation we talked about last time, which is relative location. These three things combined together give us a very accurate representation of what place actually is. 
So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you a picture. When I show you the picture, I want you to pause the screen and I want you to take two minutes and I want, to, I want you to list three physical and three cultural characteristics of the area that you're being seen. We'll do the first one together. So for example, when we see Atlanta, physical characteristics, fairly flat, might be some hills, looks like it's a pretty hot climate. We know it's got water resources. We can tell that from the Chattahoochee River. Uh, we know, look at the vegetation, that there's certain types of trees and vegetation. Um, we know just from experience about Georgia red clay, those are physical features, cultural features. It's an industrialized area. Look at the airplanes, look at all the cars, a lot of infrastructure, which means things that help people go to work. We like to be entertained, whether it's the varsity or we see, uh, this is old Turner Field in Fulton County Stadium. The Braves are obviously no longer here, but we can see a lot about what's going on in this area just based off that picture. So three physical, three cultural. As I skip, pause the screen, jot a few down, then unpause the screen and see how you did. So here we go, first one. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, hit pause. All right, so as you unmute yourself, okay, or you unpause the screen, let's talk about it. Physical features, we know there's a lot of water resources. Looks like it's fairly hilly, um, or, or we'll say, we might even say rolling hills, and that's talking about topography. We can see a lot of different vegetation uh, with the trees that are there. Looks like it's got a pretty temperate climate that it may not be too hot or too cold. Um, trying to think, can't say much about the animal or, or the uh, soil conditions or anything like that. Cultural features, no, we know it's very urban. It's got a lot of infrastructure. Water transportation is big for people. They like to be entertained. If you're a Steelers fan, this is Heinz Field. Um, it's a very urban area that's business centered. These are, are, are cultural characteristics, okay? So let's go to another one. Venice, Italy. Pause the screen. Okay, so what do we know physically about Venice, Italy? Very flat, lots of water, limited vegetation. We don't see very many trees. We see some of this stuff on that the people are growing outside their houses. Um, it looks to be a pretty temperate, if not warm, climate. Those are all your physical features. Now, cultural features looks very historic and old. That talks about the people and how long ago it was developed. We see a lot of group um, groups gathering, so obviously entertainment is big. Water transportation is huge in these areas. Looks like a fairly urban area. And so this is, you know, that would be an example of physical and cultural characteristics of Venice, Italy. Last one. Rio. Go ahead and pause the screen if you haven't. All right, so Rio physically, we see it's got, you know, a fairly um, hilly landscape. We see that there's a lot of vegetation. Looks like it's a very warm climate. Um, we can see some, some beaches, but guess what? Who made the beaches? People did, so that would not be a physical characteristic. Uh, what we do know culturally is that it's a very urbanized area, huge city. We know that um, festivities are a huge part of their culture, as seen in that picture. We know that Christianity is the dominant religion. Christ the Redeemer statue right here. And so, again, we get this kind of understanding of what it's like to be there based off these physical and cultural characteristics. And so we're going to stop there for today, and we'll pick back up with region our next time.